everything was perfect again. I thought, I finally found my soulmate. I have my perfect little family, four children. All of them were healthy. God was blessing us. He was also in church, so we, we were active in our church. I had to go to the police academy for my 911 training, and I had to be away from the home Monday through Sunday. Well, actually, Monday through Friday. Able to come home on Fridays and had to be back at the academy on Sunday. I was there two weeks and came home that Friday, spent some time with my family, and for some reason I had a dread that weekend. I had some tests coming up the next week at the academy, and I wasn't for sure what to expect. I was really kind of nervous, and I, I kind of talked myself out of it. I can't do this. This is a really tough job, but he kept coaching me and telling me, you can do it, you can do it. This is for us. We've built our home. I'm going to be there for you. So. That Sunday, we dropped our children off at their grandparents' house because they was going to keep them for the week because he had to go on shift. I came home and packed my bags, and I went to the academy. And that night, when I got to the academy, I called him to let him know that I had made it because it was kind of late at night. I had to be there by 11 that night. And he had called me back, told me that he was going to run into town, that he was going to get him an ice cream. And I kind of laughed about it, told him, okay, be careful, and I'll see you tomorrow. He is planning on coming to lunch uh, with me the next day. That 2 o'clock that morning, Monday morning, there was a knock on our door. And my roommate at the time told me to get up because anytime you're gone from the weekend when you come back that next morning, they would always do a, a random drug test. So we was thinking that they were knocking on our door to get us to be tested for maybe something we had done that weekend. They called my name and I thought, well, they've just called me first. And when I opened the door, I stepped out into the hallway and I saw a line of people and I didn't understand that. Now that I look back, I understand what it was, but at the time I didn't think anything about it. And there was a man standing in front of me. I recognized his face from my husband's work. And he said, Sherry, and I said, yes. And he said, I need to tell you something. He's been in an accident. And immediately I said, okay, where is he? And he grabbed my shoulders and he said he didn't make it. And immediately everything went silent. And the first thing that could come out of my mouth is why? Why am I having to go through this again? I don't understand. And I turned around and looked my boss was standing beside of me, standing there with support. And I just looked at her and I said, what am I gonna do? How do I tell my children? And all she could do was hold me. And I didn't I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether to to fall down and throw just throw a tantrum. I didn't know whether to pray. I couldn't pray for myself. I had to be prayed up before that moment came in order for God to be with me when I needed him the most. I couldn't think of my children. They were at their grandparents and there was no way. There was no way, it sounds cruel, but I just couldn't go to them and tell them that their daddy was gone and my oldest daughter to tell her, we're going through this again. I had a friend of mine that was there at the time, which there was, he was the battalion chief for the fire department. He drove me to my parents' house and I knocked on the door this was like three o'clock in the morning by this time. My mother came to the door and I couldn't even get out the words. I just went in and sat on the couch. My dad came in the room and we all just sat there in silence. My dad and mom did not understand what was going on. This man looked at my dad and told him, he said, there's been an accident. My dad asked what happened. And he said, it's your, your son-in-law and he didn't make it. And immediately I looked at my mother's face and I could see the hurt and the question why in her face and she come over and grab me and hug me. And at that time my children came in the door. They sat on the couch and I was hoping that someone had already told them because it was hard for me to try to even think of how to deliver the news to them. But when they sat on the couch, they was asking what's going on and I looked at him and said, Daddy's been in an accident. And it was like I could see my image 
of when the words were told to me for the first time. They looked at me like, why? Why, Mommy? Why didn't God move in this and shield Daddy that he would have made it? I had no answers for them. I couldn't even answer for myself. All I could do was hold them. My oldest daughter was standing on the porch. She didn't even come in the house. And I went to her, and the first thing she said, why am I having to go through this again? She had already lost one dad, and the man that really raised her from the age of four to a teenager, he's gone now. And I told her, the first thing I said, we're gonna be okay, because I knew that God had brought me through the first time, and he'll definitely bring me through this time. This was somewhat different. The news is different, but it was still a loss. But I knew with God's help that I would get through it. We went through the funeral. I looked back at the books and there were over 2,000 people that was at his funeral that day where he was a firefighter. He received great recognition. I shook so many hands and hugged so many people and found myself at times even comforting friends of his where he had worked with them and they got so close together. But when I went home, I was alone. All those people couldn't help me. No one could help me, but there was only one that could help me, and he did. This is me, why? So many times over my life I've questioned God, why? I don't understand. Why did this have to happen? Why did my children lose their daddies? Why did I have to lose two husbands? I had a soulmate that I thought would be with me for till the day we took our last breath. When I took that vow, that's what I meant, and I stood by him. Then the second soulmate came along. I thought this was the way that God had planned for me, that we would live our life, be old, raise our children, see our grandchildren, but that didn't turn out. My plan is not God's plan. Jeremiah 29 11 tells us, for I know the plan I have for you. That's it. So many times I question why, and it's okay. God understands that. There's times that I hear of accidents on the news, and automatically I think of the spouse. My heart breaks for them because I know at that moment the news that they're going to get, it's going to be just overwhelming. But if they can see farther down the road, just a year, just two years down the road, it does get easier. I know that sounds hard, but it is. With God, all things are possible. Our strength comes from Him. And I don't know what I would do with what I would do without him. Just hang on, trust in God, and know that he does have a plan. It may not be the way we want it, but it's how he wants it. In the center of his will is where I want to be. And I always want to teach my children, don't say that you can't live without somebody, because you can. I know that sounds cruel, but you can live without someone. But there's one that you can't live without, and I will not live without God anymore. I will not do that because he's the one that's got me where I am today. I'm thankful I've made it. It's been four years since my second husband was killed, but I've made it. I've never done without. I've never had to ask him for anything but strength. But through him, I have got it, and I've made it. So many times I had questioned God, why? Why? Why did this happen? I don't understand. Why am I having to go through it again? But at one point, God let me know, even if I did tell you why, you wouldn't understand it. Wow, what a way for God to open my eyes and show me how big He is. He is in control of all of this. He knows what He's doing. Don't question why He does something, because it always works out for His glory. Not for the glory of myself, but for the glory of Him. It's His plan, His way, and it should be no other way.